Star Wars 7x7 episode 2729. We're continuing our series of looks at War of the Bounty Hunters to find out what Boba Fett was up to in the days leading up to Return of the Jedi and potentially learn more about what could be happening in the book of Boba Fett. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So once again we're going to cover six issues and this one's going to be even breezier because Boba Fett doesn't appear in a lot of them and is barely referenced in some of them. Now all of these revolve around a War of the Bounty Hunters limited series issue and this month is no exception. This is the month of August that we're talking about here and War of the Bounty Hunters 3 came out then. But but before we get to that one, we have to do a little prelude stuff, which has to do with the one shot about 4LOM and Zuckus, and also the Bounty Hunters issue. This is Bounty Hunters issue 14, 15. Make that Bounty Hunters 15. So before we get to that one, the 4LOM and Zuckus one shot. So basically, the thing you need to know about that is that Zuckus survives getting kicked off a landing platform by Boba Fett, and 4LOM's head is discovered by Jawas on Tatooine, and through a bunch of convolutions looted stuff, the 4LOM head is put on some other droid body and turned into a droid that wants to kill Zuckus and Zuckus is heartbroken because they were partners and this all has to do with a job that they did together many years ago and they thought that they had killed this particular person upon whom there was a bounty and had worked together and it was fabulous but now it turns out that that person survived and set this whole thing up so yeah that's all you need to know all right so let's move on to Bounty Hunters 15 and that one all you really need to know is that Dengar and Valence make it off of Nar Shaddaa, so Deathstick lets them go. They head to Canto Bite, that's great, and then <laughs> Deathstick trails them to Canto Bite and starts beating on him at Canto Bite. And just, you know, it's great to see Dengar getting beaten down. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Continue my dislike of that character. Anyway, it turns out that Deathstick gets some sort of emergency communication and leaves before Dengar can be finished off, but Dengar apparently sleight of hand a Crimson Dawn invite out of Deathstick's pockets or something and says, I know exactly where to find Solo. And so there you go. Now they're finally going to catch up with everyone after all the action is done. So then we get to the main event, which is War of the Bounty Hunters issue three. And we pick up right where we left off, where Vader shows up at the Vermilion, which is the Crimson Dawn Fortress flagship, as it's called. And this is on the frozen sea world of Jakara, by the way, J-E-K-A. ARA since I don't think I've actually mentioned it on the show yet. And so, you know, Jabba bid a million dollars and won, and Vader showed up and said, nope, you can't have him, he's mine. So from there, there's a bit of terse dialogue between Jabba and Vader, and Baku the Hutt tries to step in and say, you know, who are you? And Vader is like, who are you? And Jabba <laughs> responds with, he's no one, which of course makes all the other huts titter behind their hands, and Baku the Hutt looks very embarrassed. It's of course silly because Darth Vader is working with Baku the Hutt behind the scenes and yeah there's a whole lot of other stuff going on with Baku which we will get to. Meanwhile Kira is assuring her trusted advisor Margo like don't worry I know how to handle a Sith Lord and once Jabba says all right fine have him Kira comes down and says oh well if you're taking him then I guess you're assuming the obligation the winning bid was a million credits so pay up. And Vader, of course, reacts with, nope, I'm not going to pay either. I can just take what I want. And Kira says, oh, is the Empire too broke to pay off its debts or are they too cheap? You know, just taunts him straight up. And that, of course, doesn't sit well with Vader. Whips out his lightsaber and Kira and he get into a fight where Kira acquits herself very well. And Vader even says, ah, oh, your skills are a credit to your master. And who trained you? Like, he's actually impressed. But eventually he just, you know, uses the force to make everyone fly around and he's about to strike Kira down when he suddenly senses the presence of Luke Skywalker and that is the only thing that saves Kira in that moment. So he ends up talking to Luke through, you know, technology means blah 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 and says, yeah, I sense your presence and you'd better get where I am because if you don't, I'm going to slice your friend in half and the issue ends with him brandishing his 
his saber across the Carbonite block. Meanwhile, Fett specifically, we talked yesterday about how Boba Fett was, you know, somewhere sort of backstage and ran into Leia and Lando and Chewie, and that obviously doesn't go very well. So they all figure out that if they start shooting at each other, it's going to draw too much attention and the Empire is going to come down on him. So Chewie just, you know, grabs Boba Fett by the neck and lifts him up. And Leia basically says, yeah, take him out, but quietly. And Fett threatens him and says, yeah, see these braids? Like, maybe some of these are your aunties and uncles. Like, yeah, I'm going to take one from you, too. Like, pulls out a knife. And, you know, everybody realizes, oh, this is going to have to be hand-to-hand -hand combat. Except that Boba Fett ends up torching Chewie. So we actually see Chewbacca fully engulfed in fire, which is kind of a horrific image, to be honest. But Lando, thankfully, whips off his cape and smothers Chewie, so everything you know, works out, everybody's okay. Except for the cape, which makes Lando sad, but he did the right thing in the moment, so there's that. And they do try to talk sense into Boba Fett and say, hey, look, you know, if it's money you're after, we'll pay you. Like, basically, it's the, the Han Solo gambit. Like, if it's money all you love, then that's what you'll get. And Boba says, nope, I ain't doing it. I have a client. I have a bounty. That's all there is. That's all there ever will be. And he goes off on his merry way. And his merry way momentarily includes considering an assassination of Darth Vader, but as he has Vader in his sights while he's battling Kira, he has a moment, Boba Fett does, of reflecting back to the Cloud City dining room in The Empire Strikes Back, where Vader deflected a blaster bolt of Han Solo's and Boba thinks, blast it, Look, this isn't going to work, and that is pretty much the end of Boba Fett in this issue, as in nothing else happens with him. Then in the Star Wars issue that ties in, this will be Star Wars 16, we knew that Luke Skywalker was on his way to Jakara to help with Lando and Leia and Chewie and support them and get Solo back, but finding out Darth Vader was there, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. And so he gets the threat from Vader, and Luke says, I'm sorry, Leia, I'm not ready to face him, and takes off. <laughs> and I'm simplifying this because there's a whole lot of other stuff that happens in the course of the issue. A lot of meditation on this stuff and on what Yoda taught him or didn't teach him and what the experience of fighting Vader was like in Cloud City. But yeah, he gets to Jakara and gets the transmission from Vader and says, I'm sorry, Leia, I'm not ready to fight him, and turns around, and that is how the Star Wars issue ends. Oh, and I'll flag one other thing before we move on. So Lando and Leia and Chewie witness Kira fighting Vader, and Leia is also impressed and is like, who is she? And Lando says, oh yeah, her name's Kira, and calls her a, quote, damn impressive woman, unquote, and says that he used to know her, and that Han used to know her too, and that's all he says about that for the moment, but yeah, probably more to come in that regard. As for the Darth Vader number 15 tie-in, well, basically the only thing you really need to know from that is that they continue to make it super official that Baku the Hutt is working for Crimson Dawn. He is not working for the Huts anymore. He is definitely full on with the Crimson Dawn party. And it's OG of Bastoon that kind of helps Vader figure that out. Vader basically sends him into the thick of things where he discovers that fact. And your side note, there have been a bunch of situations where Crimson Dawn is basically going to these various clans and saying, join us or else. And this happened with the Mourner's Whale where they said, join us or else, and they wouldn't join. And so they got decimated. This was the way that it was initially pitched with the, um, you know, the people in Moss Entha in that Jabba the Hutt one shot where Crimson Dawn people showed up in the town and said, join us or die. And, you know, Baku people either join them or die, and apparently Baku joined up in a major way. But they aren't just recruiting by strong arming. It seems that they also have more subtle means as well, and we find that out in the Dr. Aphra tie-in issue, that's issue 13, where this particular Black Sun person that they tried to set up to steal a necklace that was actually a slicer's dream, as Aphra calls it, that could store 
tons of information in it. Well, it turns out that that Black Sun operative, after they you know assaulted the Black Sun operative in the bathroom, that's a whole other story. But the point that you need to know is that they need to figure out that that operative has a Crimson Dawn tattoo, and so this person who you know appeared to be Black Sun is actually a spy for Crimson Dawn. And Afra, after getting over her panic attack situation, manages to convince Sana to explore the Vermilion since they have access codes. The Vermilion being the fortress flagship of Crimson Dawn, but they get caught and imprisoned on the flagship, and that's the end of the issue, the cliffhanger for that. There is a side story that's happening, and if you're reading the comics, then I'm probably about to do you a little bit of a disservice because this side story I have not been keeping very close track of, but apparently it has to do with somebody who used to work for this sixth kin organization that I mentioned earlier with the bounty hunters thing, who is you know not working for them anymore, and so sixth kin sent a couple of people to assassinate this guy, but there's a deeper relationship between them. Anyway, the thing that you need to know for our purposes is that this guy is trying to recruit his you know, former protégés to join him with Crimson Dawn. So here's another person who's been recruited from this sixth kin organization in Crimson Dawn, and he says as part of his pitch, I've met one of their leaders, her name is Kira, and so, you know, that was kind of interesting that he would say one of their leaders, so yeah, I don't know if that means that he just thinks she's one of them and doesn't necessarily know that she is the one, but yeah, be that as it may, he says she's a visionary and Crimson Dawn is the future. And so there you go, that update to you about the month of August in the War of the Bounty Hunters mega storytelling initiative. And basically, as far as Boba Fett goes specifically, we know that he didn't actually kill Zuckus, that he's willing to set fire to Chewbacca, but he's not willing to take a shot at Vader. And so, yeah, what he's going to do next and how he thinks he's going to get Han Solo back, well, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see how that all unfolds. And that is going to do it for this episode of the show. So it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always, and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders, may the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.